At this point, we're going to start working on circuit 3A. Notice that we have our old friend, a potentiometer, and we have a new item, a servo motor. It has three wires, and we're going to need three additional jumper wires for this servo motor to connect it to the redboard and the breadboard. We will be using the same colors as the wires attached to the servo motor, so we'll be using a white wire for the white one, the red for the red, and black for the black. However, you might have a servo motor that has a different color array, and it should have an orange, red, or brown wire. Your red is still your positive, your brown is now your negative, and your orange wire is now replacing the white wire that's in my servo motor. So black to black, black wire going to ground, I have my red wire going to my positive column. Finally, my white wire is going to my digital pin 9. So if you set up your wiring correctly and if you already uploaded your code correctly, you should notice that if you turn your potentiometer, your servo motor starts spinning. We have our typical comment from 1 through 12 from Sparkphone. Line 14, we're including this library. So the library is helping us to minimize the code that we write. And the servo library is allowing us to like run and use servo motors by using a few lines of code. So shout out to the people that wrote out the servo library a while back. Line 16 and line 17, we have our integers. So we have our pop position that relates to our potentiometer. And we have our servo position, which relates to our servo motor. Servo my servo. This is just allowing us to use the servo and we're going to control that this specific servo with this term, my servo. We are identifying in void setup in line 23 that my servo is in pin number 9. So in void loop, this is where the magic is happening. We're running our code over and over again. We first identify that our pop position value is equal to whatever value we have registered in analog A0. The potentiometer is a variable resistor. And as we vary the resistance, we vary the reading that is inputted into the breadboard. And then we use this reading to control the servo motor. So the specific location of the servo motor is going to be mapped out, this is a function, by whatever value is in the pop position. Our potentiometer has a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of 1023 bytes. Our servo motor can only turn from zero degrees to 180 degrees. In the map function, we are mapping out at a position of zero bytes. So in this location here, our servo motor will be at zero degrees. However, we turn our potentiometer all the way to 1023, then our servo motor will also move to 180 degrees. The code in line 37 physically moves the servo motor to whatever position is mapped out on line 33. So line 33, we create a value for the servo motor and then in line 37, we use my servo right to move the servo motor to that specific position. Line 37, my servo dot right is only allowed to be used because we included the library. So if you ever use a servo motor, you have to use this line 14. You have to use line 19 to identify your servo motor. You have to identify what pin you're using. And then you also have to move your servo motor to a specific location. If your servo motor is kind of twitching, make sure the range for your servo motor is not going up to 0 to 180 degrees. Even though that's the maximum value, try to keep your servo rotating from 20 to 160 degrees. So that's why we have this right here from 20 to 160. This set is for the potentiometer, and this set is for the servo motor's position. So now for challenge number one, let's reverse the direction of the servo motor. So in this situation, we want to reverse the direction of the servo motor. We can just type in 160 and put a value of zero here. Currently, if I turn my potentiometer to the left, my servo motor goes to the right. And if I turn my potentiometer to the right, my servo goes to the left. So let's flip this. Change this value to 160 and this will be zero. If I turn my potentiometer to the left, my servo goes to the left. If I turn my potentiometer to the right, the servo goes to the right. For challenge number two, we are merely changing the range so that when we move the potentiometer a lot, the servo only moves a tiny bit. So we're going back to our map position and we're going to change our servo motor to about 30 degrees. I've turned all the way and my servo motor only moves a few degrees. 
So for challenge number three, we are just switching out the sensors. We're going to replace the potentiometer for a light sensor. A light sensor, remember, looks like this, and the last time we used it was in circuit 1D. If we look closely, the photoresistor has three jumper wires, and one jumper wire goes to positive, another goes to negative, and the third wire, which is in the middle, goes to analog A0 or any of these pieces here. Our current potentiometer is going to analog zero, so that's set up, and these three wires are all set up. However, we also need a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Let's disconnect our breadboard. So to make sure this code works correctly, make sure you upload your original code off from CodeVendor so that your map position is going from zero to 1023 and zero to 160 for the servo motor. In this situation, the photoresistor is now controlling the servo motor. So use this to your advantage. You can design a smart home with this that allows light to enter from outside or you can just play with this.